Hello you gorgeous people, welcome back to my second channel, welcome back to Jack in the Books. Today, I'm doing something ridiculously exciting, <laughs> at least to me. So I moved to New York three days ago, and honestly it's a miracle that I've been able to put this off for three days, because I had to order a new um, camera battery charger, because I forgot my charger. And so while I was waiting for that to come, I was like, I can't go and do this because I want to film it. So I moved to New York, and today I am going to be visiting Barnes & Noble for the very first time. And I... <laughs> I'm so excited. Like, maybe too excited. I didn't actually realize this until I got here. New York's biggest Barnes & Noble is actually right by my apartment, which is the dream. And also, a nightmare for my bank account. This is going to be terrible, but like in the best possible way. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do today, and I thought I would take you along with me, and we can explore together and nerd out over all the book displays and the books, and maybe buy something. I'm gonna buy something, let's be real. Are we expecting me to come out of New York City's biggest bookstore without a book? Probably not. So, let's head to the bookstore. Ah! I finally got around to kind of unpacking my suitcases today. I've been really putting it off. I unpacked all the books <laughs> as soon as I arrived, but not the clothes and stuff, but it was getting to the point where I couldn't keep wearing the same gross sweater every single day. And so, since I've done one one productive thing today, I think that I deserve a treat, I think I deserve a reward, I think I should go book shopping right now. This is a very transitional season outfit. So I have this Valentino sweater and then these Nike shorts because this color matches this color. So I think that makes me a fashionista, right? I also got these new gym shoes and I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to break them in. And yes, I am going to the bookstore before I sign up for the gym. <laughs> Priorities. Okay, this is like one of those problems that's not really a problem, but it is a problem. So my tote bag, which is this one from Daunt Books, is kind of the same color as the sweater that I'm wearing, which could be a faux pas. Um, and the only people I really care about impressing are the people in bookstores. I want them to think I'm sexy and cool. And I know I will be appreciating their tote bags, so I need them to appreciate mine. And uh, I just don't know if that's gonna cut it. Fortunately, I also packed this one. This is today's tote bag of choice. That's a crucial part of the book shopping experience and I will not hit otherwise. By the way, this is the book that I'm currently reading and I've been sitting out here on the terrace, feeling very lucky to be in New York City. <laughs> Okay guys, I am back from Barnes & Noble and life is sweet. Firstly, because I just went to Trader Joe's and I got this um, orange, peach and mango juice and it's 
so good, so good. I love Trader Joe's, it's my new favorite place. Also, I have to put you on this. Um, these sea salt brownie bites, they just have them like sitting right by the, um, the tills, the cash point where you pay. And they're game changing, they're so freaking tasty. Um, I love them. Anyway, so I went to Barnes & Noble. I did make a little purchase, which I'll show you in a second, but my overall review, <laughs> no one asked for this, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. So basically, at first, it was a roller coaster of emotions because I walked in to Barnes & Noble and it was big, it was, it was huge. Like in terms of spatially, there was, there was a lot of space, but there weren't that many books. Like on the ground floor, so there's like one table display for classics, one for, um, they're like two for one deal that they have on. One for romance, a few kind of like own voices, um, displays, which is really cool. And like a contemporary fiction table, right? So there weren't that many books downstairs. And because I'm used to like Waterstones and Daunt Books, which are owned by the same company, they just have bookshelves upon bookshelves as soon as you walk through the door, like it's book overload. Um, so that's what I was expecting. And so then when I didn't see that, I was kind of confused because they had like fiction and non-fiction and YA like all in one place. But there were escalators, so I went upstairs and then the next floor up was just like only YA. And then the floor above that, then it got into like movies and there was a cafe and stuff. So I thought that was everything. So I went back downstairs and I was kind of like underwhelmed because although it was a big space, there wasn't actually that big a variety of books. Then I met one of you guys outside the bookstore who actually works there. And they told me, oh, you didn't go up to the fourth floor. That's where all the fiction books are. So I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even realize there was another floor. So then I get to the fourth floor and it's heaven. They had so many books. It was uh, incredible. Every book you can possibly imagine. It was beautifully laid out. They have loads of really good displays. I think it was, the booksellers and the people who work there obviously are very in tune with what is actually kind of like trending and what people are actually looking for. So they had like a dark academia um, table, they had a book talk table. And I love that kind of thing because I think it makes the whole experience less overwhelming for people who are looking for something that they know they're going to enjoy. They can go to a, a table that tells them exactly what they're looking for and then they can kind of have a rummage through there. And it just feels like it kind of whittles down the many, many books that they have into something that that person is actually looking for. So I thought that was really cool. Um, like I said, they also had um, stalls for like own voices. Oh Lord, my, um, my memory card filled up. But um, what I was saying was there were tables celebrating pride. There were tables celebrating black voices. There were tables celebrating so many diverse types of literature, and that's exactly what a bookstore should be, right? So I thought that was really cool, and I will absolutely be going back. I'm gonna explore, I'm gonna do some Barnes & Noble tourism, but also I will have videos coming very soon where I'm gonna go to some independent bookstores and to the Strand to get some like secondhand books and that kind of thing. So there's lots more to come, but I just thought this was like a good starting point. Um, let me show you the book I bought. So basically, I bought this book because I am part of the TikTok book club, and this month's pick is Glory by No Violet Bolawayo. Now this is very interesting because I think it's kind of like Animal Farm sort of vibes in the sense that I'm pretty sure a lot of the novel is narrated by or from the perspective of animals. So they're kind of like anthropomorphic animals, um, which is interesting. Let me read you the blurb. From the award-winning author of Booker Prize finalist We Need New Names, an exhilarating novel about the fall of an oppressive regime and the chaos and opportunity that rises in its wake. No Violet Bolawayo's bold new novel follows the fall of the old horse, the long-serving leader of a fictional country, and the drama that follows a rumbustious nation of animals on the path to true liberation. And so this is inspired by the coup in Zimbabwe, because Mugabe was the president for nearly four decades. So it's kind of like a fictional world, but definitely very much inspired by um, politics in Zimbabwe. Um, it says, glory shows a country's imploding, narrated by a chorus of animal voices that unveil the ruthlessness required to uphold the illusion of absolute power and the imagination and bulletproof optimism to overthrow it completely. By immersing readers in the daily lives of a population in upheaval, Bolawayo reveals the dazzling life force and irrepressible wit that lie barely concealed beneath the surface of seemingly bleak circumstances. So I think this is gonna be super fascinating and you know what, it better be because <laughs> this cost me $30, $30. I nearly had a heart attack when I saw the price of this, but I need it for the TikTok book club. So um, why the hell books so expensive in America? <laughs> what the heck? Um, I mean, hard, hardback books are always more expensive, right? So it is a hardback, but holy moly, $30. And right now the pound just crashed. Um, thanks Liz Trust. So um, since the pound has crashed, it's pretty much one dollar to one pound right now, so this cost me 30 pounds. I'm shook, but I need it. Um, the other thing is that it's very big and bulky and it is hardcover, which makes it heavy. 
Um, so who knows how I'm gonna get this back home with me when I eventually go back to the UK, but it is what it is. For now, I'm gonna drink my orange, peach, and mango juice. Um, <laughs> life is sweet. And I'm gonna film a Q&A about the fact that I've arrived in New York. This is basically gonna be me, like, announcing that I'm here. Um, because up until this point, I haven't shared it yet. I quite like when I move to a new place to just, like, not share it immediately. Um, just so that I can have a couple days to, like, <laughs> get my bearings on my own. Um, before, like, thinking about content all the time. So, I basically have just given myself, like, a few days off social media um, to just like explore, work out the area. This is the first like vlog that I'm filming and now I'm gonna film my like sit down Q&A for my main channel to basically share that I'm here. So that's good fun. Oh, that's actually not true because I filmed a video yesterday <laughs> showing uh, which books I brought with me to New York. But you know what? I lose track. That The second channel doesn't count, right? In my head I forget they're actually videos and not just me like FaceTiming a friend. <laughs> I hope that's how they feel too, like it's just like we're just on FaceTime just having a little trip to Barnes & Noble. Anyway, these are my two purchases of the day, a book and some very tasty brownies. Okay, now I am getting ready for a night out. I have to double sock when I wear my docks because otherwise I get little blisters. I am running 10 minutes late, so I definitely do not have time to be vlogging, but here we are. I've gone for this like lilac kind of shirt. I think I might add a crossbody bag. Uh, I might need to so I can carry something with me on the train. I fondly refer to this bag as my book bag because it's the exact size of a paper bag. I literally went into the shop and I was like, I need to find a bag that is exactly the size of one book so that when I get the train, I can just do this and it's perfect. And then hopefully in here, ah, my Metro card. I bought an unlimited pass and then I was telling a friend about like a story and I was like, oh, I was trying to buy the unlimited pass. And he was like, no, no, don't do that. It's a waste of money. And I'd already done it. <laughs> I was like, it's in my bag right now. It was $127 for unlimited travel, which is a lot, but I thought for my first month in New York, I'll use this a lot because I'm going to be traveling around being a big fat tourist. So anyway, I have this, and now I'm going for dinner in Queens, which is fun because I've never been there before, and I'm going for dinner with like a bunch of New York City creatives. My friend was like, let me organize a dinner, invite a bunch of fun people, so you meet some people when you first arrive in the city, which is so lovely. Keys, let's not forget that. One thing about me is I'm gonna get the subway the wrong way every single time, without fail. Now look at this. That is New York City. The problem is ice cream, hair. <laughs> we got you covered. It's fine. Not a problem. I I grabbed that piece of hair real quick. Okay, your hair is so long. Oh nice. There's a whole team. Wait, that was so good. That was so. The whole team. Your hair is so long. It kept going. I was like, where? Where is it ending? We nearly had a we nearly had a disaster there. It's all good. We're all good. Oh, yeah. Any time. That was a close call. Is it called brown or brown? Brown means colored. Ah. Oh, that's it. That's it. We're not in Barnes and Noble anymore. <laughs> As we know, I am utterly incapable of ending a video the day that I actually film it. So it's the next day now. Hello. Um, I met some lovely, lovely people yesterday. Um, it was a lovely group of like maybe 12 to 15 creators. And they were all so awesome, so inspiring. You know when you like talk to people and you get this like fire in your belly to keep working hard and um, you know, it's infectious hearing their like enthusiasm. I haven't, I haven't got a kiwi in my teeth. Oh, okay, we're all good, we're all good. Anyways, one of those lovely people that I met was Leah Yu, who has a skincare company. It's called Crave Beauty, and she very kindly gave me these samples, which I'm so buzzing about because my skin has actually been kind of like breaking out a little bit. This is called Great Barrier Relief. What do you do? Oh, it literally says on here what it does. That's very, that's very convenient. Relieves and rebalances sensitive skin by replenishing the skin barrier. Damaged skin can breathe a sigh of relief. Oh, I need that. Skin instructions. Use when sensitive, day and or night. Apply one slash two pumps and use before moisturizer. Okay, one, two. Do you know, this is new for me. Does this make me like a skin fluencer? I feel like my skin is gonna thank me for this. Thanks, Leah. Um, I appreciate it. This one is a matcha hemp hydrating cleanser. By the way, how beautiful is the packaging of these? Maybe I should open it like this. Oh, how satisfying was that? 
Oh, that was so cool. Okay, so this whisks away the day's dirt and leaves skin feeling calm, cleansed, and quenched. Oh, this is perfect living in a big city because it's dirty. Skin instructions. Use daily, day and or night. Massage gently on wet skin and rinse with lukewarm water. Use after makeup remover. Okay, that's gonna be a later today job. Amazing. And her story behind like why she came up with the brand was so inspiring. So I just, this is why I'm here, right? This is why I'm in New York City to meet incredible, inspiring, lovely people. So last night was really fun. Thank you for watching this video. This started off as like a Barnes and Noble vlog and then kind of became <laughs> a little bit more as well. Let me know which other bookstores I should be heading to in New York City. I absolutely will. Um, I might even do something today because it's still very early. It's like 10 a.m. So I've got time. I've got loads I can do today. All the best. Stay in touch. Have a wonderful day. And you can subscribe if you're new. I'll catch you next time. And bye-bye.